admin dashboards are among the most common user interfaces you'll come across as a web developer. And sometimes they can be a bit tricky to build because these will usually have uh, lots of icons, but also uh, collapsible elements like sidebars and menus. So to help you with that, in this course, we'll build this very simple responsive admin dashboard, which is largely based on the WordPress dashboard. It features a button for collapsing and expanding the sidebar, and also a light and dark toggle switch that lets us use a dark or a light color scheme. But hey, for just meeting, my name is Adi. I'm a web designer and developer, and we're gonna split this course the following way. Uh, first, we'll write all the necessary markup. And here I'll also show you a very cool technique for using SVG sprites. Uh, in lessons uh, three and four, we'll uh, style the header and we'll also create the sidebar uh, toggle interaction. And in lesson five, we'll uh, go ahead and style uh, the sidebar. Uh, then we'll create the dark and light toggle, which uh, saves the option in local storage. So uh, it's going to be remembered next time for us. And in the final two lessons, we'll style our dashboard for large screens. Uh, and we'll also create the sidebar collapse functionality. Now, before we get to all of that, I want to quickly tell you about a very cool resource called Envato Elements. Here you can find uh, tons of useful resources like fonts, icons, UI kits, WordPress themes, uh, music, stock photos, and much more. For creatives like me, this is an amazing resource because all the assets have simple commercial licensing and you're not bound to any contract. Therefore, you can cancel whenever you want. So if you're interested, check out the link in the video description. All right, ready to get started? Uh, let's begin by writing the markup. Before we get to that, I just want to point out that uh, this uh, course is based on an awesome tutorial written by George Martsukos. Uh, you can find a link to that in the video description along with links to all the resources I've used. Uh, also, if you want to follow along, I included the Figma design file that uh, you'll be seeing in just a little bit, and also a code starter kit. So go ahead and download the, uh, those if you want to code alongside me for uh, the rest of this course. Oh, and also don't forget to subscribe to Envato Tuts Plus for more free courses and tutorials just like this one. All right, let's go ahead and write some HTML. So uh, let me show you what I have set up here. Uh, this is the design we'll be working off of. It's pretty straightforward, really. As I was uh, telling you, it's largely based on uh, the WordPress dashboard. So these are the mobile versions. So for screens that are smaller than 768 pixels, uh, we have a simple nav at the top with a button that toggles this sidebar, which uh, has a menu, it has the dark light toggle switch. And then on larger screens, uh, we have a couple of changes on the top bar. Uh, we no longer have the uh, the button that uh, uh, triggers the sidebar because now it's permanently visible. Instead, we have just a random logo. And um, the icons that you see here also have a couple of labels now. And of course, everything is bigger. Uh, the sidebar also has the collapsible functionality, uh, which uh, basically removes uh, these uh, menu headings and also the menu item text. It just uh, removes, it just, uh, sorry, shows the icons. And of course, for this, we have a light mode that you can see here, and also a dark mode that looks something like this. Again, uh, the Figma file is available for you to download. So go ahead and do that uh, if you want to follow along. Now, I've also included, as I was saying, a code starter kit, right? So the code starter kit currently looks something like this. We have an app CSS, an app.js and an index HTML. 
So I have those opened here in my uh, code editor and the index.html just um, has a couple of things loaded. I'm uh, using modern normalize from a CDN for as a, as a reset, basically. I'm loading a fig tree, which is a free Google font, and I'm loading the app CSS and app JS. Now, the one thing that's uh, very interesting about this project, and this is exactly uh, the same thing that George did in his tutorial, is we're not using any external images, right? All of uh, the icons, let me just bring this back here, all of these icons are SVGs and we're using them in line. Essentially, we're going to create an SVG sprite. And by doing this, we're creating a page uh, that loads very fast because we will have very few HTTP requests since we don't have to load any external images. Everything is defined in the HTML file. So to show you that, uh, I created an SVG just to speed things up here. And this SVG has a bunch of symbols in it, right? And each symbol has an ID and a view box, depending on the, uh, the size of that, uh, of that SVG file. And as you can see, I have symbols for every single image in the design, every single icon from the logo to the icons here in the top bar to the ones in the, in the sidebar, everything is defined in this SVG file. And I'm going to show you uh, exactly how you can do that. I went ahead and included uh, this by default, so you don't have to uh, waste a lot of time doing it yourself. But if you want to do it, here's how. First of all, you go to Figma, you select uh, the uh, the element that you want to uh, use as an SVG, you right click it, you copy paste as SVG. Okay, and then you go in here, you paste that in, you change the SVG to a symbol. Uh, if you want, you can remove the within height, fill, and also these attributes. And personally, I like to remove the fill color as well, because I'm going to define that later in CSS. And you can just give it an ID of whatever you want. Right. So uh, I'll show you in just a little bit how you can use these symbols to load the SVGs in your document. It's really that simple. So I did that already. So you won't have to. All right, so let's go ahead and delete this. Oh, and I also set a display to none on this SVG. So it's not showing up in the page here. All right, so let's, uh, let's collapse this and start our coding journey. And for that, we'll of course be uh, referencing the uh, Figma design. And we'll start right here with the top bar. So we'll create a header for this. So I'm going to say header, I'm going to give it an ID of main header. And inside, I'm going to use a nav. And then we basically have three groups of content, right? We have this one, the sidebar toggle, we have these, which will take us to different pages. And we have this one. And of course, uh, these are also present, most of them in the large screen version, except we're hiding the sidebar toggle and we're displaying an additional logo here. And because we're going to be using Flexbox to, uh, to space these apart, the markup should organize uh, all of these elements in three parts. So let's start with this, uh, with this button here. I'm going to be using an actual button and I'll be giving it an ID of main header sidebar toggle. Of course, you can call this whatever you want. And then I'm going to use an SVG and I'm going to give it an ID of toggle icon menu. And inside, this is the interesting part. We're going to say use xlink href equals to 
and we're going to place the ID of the symbol that we defined here, right? So this is the symbol for the logo, but we need the menu icon. So we're grabbing this ID, yeah, and we're placing it right here. And then uh, when we, of course, click this icon, uh, we're going to change it. We're going to display an X instead. So let's also create that. We're going to say toggle icon close, and we're loading the symbol with an ID of icon close. Okay. So now if we go back to our uh, page here, you can see that we're displaying these SVGs. Of course, they're super big right now, but we'll uh, come back later from CSS and change their size. Next, let's see about this group here. We basically have three icons, but these uh, should also be links, right? Because they will take us to different pages. So what I'll do is I'll uh, create a UL, a list, unordered list, and a list item. And inside the list item, uh, first I'll create the logo. So I'm going to say A that has an SVG inside. That's going to take us to index.html. And the SVG, well, we're just going to load the logo here. So that's our first list item. And let's also give this an ID of a main header logo. And I'm doing this so I can target it later and hide it on small screens. And then it's simply a matter of uh, creating list items for the other three links. So something like this, right? I'm creating an A with an SVG that uh, brings in the icon. And then for the text, I'm using a span element. And then finally, we have the user icon that uh, says welcome admin. And for that, I'm going to create uh, another link just like this. Uh, this time the span is uh, in front of the SVG. And the reason I placed it outside of my list here is that I want to use Flexbox to space these properly. And by using space between, I have one group, second group, and third group. And Flexbox will align these nicely. Okay, let's move on to the main section now. So this has uh, the main content that you see here. Uh, we also have this overlay that is, that is only shown on mobile when we open the sidebar. And then we have the actual sidebar. So let's do the following. I'm going to create a section with an ID of main. And then I'm going to create the overlay div. We'll be styling this a bit later. And then we have a div with an ID of sidebar. And then we have a div with an ID of main content. Okay, and in the main content, I'm going to create another div called main content container and a paragraph there that says this is, oops, the page content. Cool. Now, let's turn our attention to the sidebar. So first of all, uh, we're looking at the, um, the large screen version because this has all of the elements. We have the collapse button. We have the navigation menu, and then we have the light and dark mode toggle. So how do we create that using HTML? First of all, let's create the button with an ID of sidebar collapse. And inside, it's just a matter of using an SVG like this to load the icon called collapse. And then I'll be using a span that says Collapse menu. Next, we're going to create the navigation nav ID sidebar nav UL. And then we have some uh, menu headings. So we're going to create a list item and inside a span with a class of or with a, the text of manage. And I'm going to add a class here of menu heading. 
the next list item is for a link, right? So we'll create an anchor tag. And inside, again, we'll be using an SVG and a span like this. Uh, the first icon is going to be dashboard, dashboard here as well. And actually, this should be placed under the SVG. And uh, this, um, this list item, or this anchor tag, being the first one, has a class of active, right? So let's add a class of active here. So we can style that properly. And then it's simply a matter of uh, duplicating the same steps for the rest of the content for the rest of the list items. So let's do that. Just like this. Right? So just like before, creating an anchor tag, using the SVG to load the icon, adding a span for the text, and then adding menu headings whenever or wherever I need it. And the, um, the sidebar is now complete, you can see it right here. Of course, this doesn't look like much right now because it's unstyled, but we'll get to that in just a little bit. Now, finally, the last step here is to create the, uh, the switcher, the theme switcher. So we're going to keep things super simple here. Uh, we're just going to load two icons inside a div, and the rest will be done from CSS. So under the nav, I'm going to create an a div with an ID of sidebar theme switcher. And inside, I'm going to place two SVGs. So loading two icons, basically, one icon sun and icon moon, and each of these has a unique ID. Let's save that. Let's see that again. Yeah, we have the two icons here. We have the page content. And with that, the HTML is complete. Of course, on a real project, this page content would be replaced with the content of that, uh, that dashboard. But for our demo, this will uh, suffice. And before we wrap things up, uh, I would just like to mention that these icons are taken from the Unicorns uh, free icon set. And the logo is from Envato Elements. Uh, if you want to grab a bunch of different icon sets, you can find them on Envato Elements. Uh, even in the written tutorial, George uses uh, an icon set from Envato Elements. I use these because it was uh, a bit more uh, convenient for me because I already had the set downloaded. So I just went ahead and used them. But uh, you can find loads uh, of icons on Envato Elements. So uh, make sure you check that out. All right, then we finished writing the markup. So now it's time for CSS. And we'll be spending the majority of this course writing CSS. So let's uh, get started with the header. Let's open up uh, app uh, CSS and see what we got. Now, first of all, in Figma, I have a couple of styles defined, a couple of color styles. So I have uh, white, a couple of uh, tints and shades for my main gray color here, uh, just a primary color and some extras for the sun, the moon, and some uh, uh, colors with transparency. And what I did was I created CSS variables for every single one of these icons. And then I also defined additional variables for dark and light themes. Now, these are exactly the same variables, but they have different values depending on what data theme attribute I have set on my HTML here. So by default, we're going to set data theme equal to dark. This will allow us to, uh, to use some of these variables. Don't worry too much about this. Right now, I'll explain uh, everything in more detail once we get to the theme switcher. So for now, just add data theme dark to your HTML element. And let's start styling. First of all, let's uh, just create some general styles here. Uh, for the HTML, I'm going to make sure the font size is set to 100%, which is 16 pixels. And I'm going to set the line height 
to 1.4 or 140 percent and then on the body i'm simply gonna uh, load the uh, fig tree font and i'm gonna set the color as a variable of gray base right so with that done let's move on to the main header so we'll target main header and there are a couple of things that we need to do here first of all uh, we're working on the dark theme so we need to set a background color and a padding of 16 and 24 pixels so we'll say background color i'm going to use the main header bg variable that i defined right so main header bg is on the dark theme is equal to gray shade 50 or 60. and then finally for padding uh, we had uh, 16 pixels top and bottom so one rem and 24 side or left and right so 1.5 rems like that next let's go ahead and use flexbox for a lot of these things so we'll be using it for the navigation we'll be using it for uh, the list inside the main header and we'll also be using it for the links because the links will have text in the large screens and the text is aligned vertically with the icon so the easiest uh, way to do that is by using flexbox so we'll just, we'll just say display flex and we'll align items to the center just like that now currently uh we don't see much here because it's kind of dark icons and dark background so why don't we change that let's say main header svg so we'll target every single svg in the main header and first of all we'll set a width to 1.5 rems or 24 pixels height same value and what else we'll use the fill property to change the color and i'm going to use a variable called top bar icon fill like so so now things are starting to take shape the uh, icons are the correct size and color uh, let's go ahead and push these in the correct place so the uh, user area needs to be to the right uh, the new comments and home need to be in the middle uh, we need to hide the logo as well so for that let's uh, let's say this main header nav because the nav has all of these elements uh, we'll say uh, justify content space between perfect now let's uh, work a little bit on this uh, this ul you can't really see it right now but we have bullet points because it's a list so we'll say main header nav ul i'm just going to reset the appearance here with uh, list style and none and we'll reset the margin the padding and also i'm going to set a gap of two rems and that's going to dictate the space between each item now we have a couple of things that uh, don't really belong in the small version and that's the logo basically and also this um this x just doesn't really belong here because it's only visible when the sidebar will be opened so what we can do for now is we can say toggle icon close and we'll set a display to none uh, but also the logo so we'll say main header logo and also the text from the links because they're not present in uh, the mobile version so for that we'll say main main header a span perfect so now we just have the icons they're spaced properly they're aligned properly let's turn our attention to this button here so this one is called sidebar toggle so main header sidebar toggle uh we're gonna set appearance to none and we're gonna set background color to transparent and we're gonna set the border 
to none. And that's just going to remove all styling. Let me just make these a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing. It's going to remove all the styling from that button. So let's take a, a look back to, to the mobile version here. Yeah, everything seems in order. The header is now styled. With the header done, it's time to uh, start working on the sidebar toggle interaction, right? We have that menu button that will show or hide the sidebar on small screens. Let's get to it. Creating the sidebar toggle functionality is a two-part process. First, we got to use uh, a little bit of JavaScript to add an event listener to this button. So whenever we click it, uh, we trigger a series of events. And then uh, there's also a CSS component. Essentially, what we'll be doing is by using JavaScript, we'll toggle a class on the body element. And using CSS, we'll get that class to style and create the actual animation. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's open app.js and let's go ahead and create the sidebar toggle function. So this function looks something like this. We're going to call it sidebar toggle. It's going to look something like this. Uh, we're going to say document body class list dot toggle. And we're going to toggle the sidebar open class. So this is the function that needs to be executed. But when do we execute it? Well, when we click on this button, right? So let's go ahead and reference that sidebar trigger. And we're going to say constant sidebar trigger is going to be equal to document get element by ID. And uh, the ID of the button is main header sidebar toggle. Now, what do we do with this trigger? We add the event listener. So we're going to say sidebar trigger, add event listener. Yeah, on click, we basically execute sidebar toggle. So by doing this, let me just open up the, um, the inspector tools here. Uh, pay attention to the body element. When we click that uh, menu button, we toggle the class of sidebar open on the body element. It's really, really quite simple. So with that in place, we can go back to our CSS and start working on uh, the styling for the sidebar. So it's actually quite simple uh, to create this animation. Let's, uh, let's add some default styling for the sidebar so we can uh, see how everything works just a little bit better. First of all, uh, we're going to add a background color and I'm going to be using the ver variable called sidebar BG. And um, then I'm going to set a position of absolute. I'm going to set a top of a zero. And let's see how that, that looks like. Okay, not bad. Uh, we do have a parent element here called section ID main. And we're actually going to use that uh, to set a position relative. Uh, because I want this, uh, the sidebar to be uh, relative to its parent element, the the main element that I defined here. So it sits under the, uh, the header. Before we move on, let me actually uh, target all of the SVGs in the sidebar and set the proper width to them. We're going to be using uh, 2.5, 1.2 point, oh, sorry, 1.25 rems. Same for height, just to make them a little smaller so I have something uh, better to work with here. And let's also set uh, a minimum height of 100% on uh, on the sidebar and I'm going to set a display to flex and I'm going to set the flex direction to column and let's set a gap 4ms just to uh, to space things out a little bit and then finally to create the animation we're going to be using transforms 
the translate transform to be uh, more specific. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to push it to the left, its entire width, and then we're going to bring it back when the body has the uh, sidebar open class. So by default, we're going to say transform. Uh, let's go ahead and use translate 3D here, minus 100%, zero, zero. So now that's completely hidden. And then we can, uh, uh, we can go right here. And we can say body with a class of sidebar open, and we'll target sidebar. I'm gonna say transform, translate 3D, zero, zero, zero. Okay, so now this works. We can uh, add a nice uh, transition here. So transition for the transform property, let's say 0.4 seconds, ease in and out, should give us A nice transition just like that. Awesome. Now, if you remember from our design, you can see that when the sidebar is opened, we also have kind of this overlay, this semi transparent overlay that goes over the content. And we actually created that in HTML right here. Uh, we can uh, go ahead and display that as well. So I'm going to target the overlay. And for the overlay, I'm going to set the opacity to one and the visibility to visible because we're going to style the overlay the following way. Position absolute, I'm going to set inset to zero. This basically means top zero, bottom zero, left zero, right zero. It basically allows this div to take the entire width and height of its parent being, of course, uh, set position uh, uh, absolute. And then I'm going to change the background color to the gray alpha 80. I'm going to set the opacity to zero by default, right? So it's hidden. I'm going to set the overflow to hidden. And I'm going to set the visibility to hidden. And then to top things off, let's add a nice transition. First of all, for the opacity. 0.4 seconds ease in and out, and then another one for the visibility. Again, 0.4 seconds ease in and out. Right, so now that displays something like that. Of course, we, we need to add a little bit of styling, but this lesson is just about creating the, uh, the sidebar toggle functionality. Um, and one last thing we need to do here is uh, replace the, uh, the bars here with an X, right? Just like we can see in our design here. We have an X here, we have the bars here. So when the sidebar is open, we need to display the X. Now, the way we did this in, um, in the HTML is we used two SVGs, right? We showed both the menu icon and the close icon. And the way we're gonna switch them is really simple. When the sidebar is opened, we just show the close icon. When it's not opened, we show the menu icon. All right, so back in app CSS, uh, let's go right here. So by default, the close icon is set to display none. However, when the body has the class of sidebar open, the toggle icon close is set to display block. In this case, we also need to hide this bit here. So to this list of selectors, we're going to add body sidebar open toggle icon menu, right? So now it's a simple swap. All right, so far so good. We have the header done, the sidebar toggle works perfectly but the sidebar itself needs some more work. So let's go ahead and do that next. All right, before styling the sidebar, let's also um, take a moment to, to style this page content to, uh, to look like our, uh, our demo here. So I'm gonna go all the way down here and I'm gonna say main content and let's add a padding 1.5 rams. This is simply for demo purposes. And then we have 
uh, the container, which just has a border of gray 1050, and it's one pixel and it's dashed with a bit of border radius. And let's give it a, a height of calc. Let's do 100 viewport height plus like 10 rems, something like that, just to simulate uh, some content in the page. And we'll set a display to grid so we can place content in the center. Just like that. Great. So now, the sidebar will span like the entire uh, height of the content and the overlay will do as well. And with that done, let's work on the sidebar itself. So we've already defined the majority of, uh, of styles here. Let's start by adding the correct color to all of these uh, icons. So I'm going to go to the SVG. I'm going to set the fill to sidebar icon fill, just like that. Uh, let's also add the proper uh, spacing or padding for uh, the sidebar. So we basically have 24 pixels on all sides, except for the right size, which is double that amount. So in here, we're going to say padding 1.5 rems top right is going to be three rems and 1.5 and 1.5 just like that now we're still working for uh, small screens so the collapse menu doesn't belong here let's uh, target that and set display to none and then let's see about this uh, this ul this list here so we're going to say sidebar nav ul uh, let's reset its appearance and set the margin and padding to zero, just like that. Next, let's see about the actual uh, links, All right? So we're going to say sidebar nav ul a, uh, just like we did with the header, we're going to use flexbox. Uh, we're going to add a padding of 0.75 rems top and bottom and zero, and that's going to allow us to space them out a little bit like so. Let's add an additional gap of 0.75 rems. Yeah, let's uh, align the items to the center. And by the way, we're only affecting each individual link by doing this, right? The gap is for uh, the distance between the icon and the text. Uh, what else? Let's remove the underline. So text deco none. Uh, let's also change the color, right? So color, we're going to be using sidebar uh, link color, like so. Uh, if you remember, we also have an active state that uh, has a more uh, contrasting color. So let's do sidebar nav ul a with class of active. And I'm simply going to change the color to sidebar link active color, like so. And also we got to affect the SVG, the icon. So the color is going to be sidebar icon active fill, uh, like that. So sidebar nav ul a active, uh, we got to use fill the fill property, not color. What else? Well, we can also add like a hover effect. Uh, so let's copy that. Let's add the pseudo class of hover. And we're simply going to change the color of sidebar link active color. That's great. And actually, you know what we can actually, uh, we can group these together. Like so. And here we can say a hover. So we don't need this. Great. You can play around with transitions if you want uh, to make things a bit smoother. Next, uh, we also have some menu headings which are <laughs> hidden like this. So let's uh, target those next. So we'll say menu heading. Here, I'm just going to change the color to sidebar menu heading color. 
And I'm going to change the font size. Let's see. Uh, in Figma, these are 13 pixels. So 13 divided by 16 is 0 0.8125. So we can say 81.25%. And that's going to make the, uh, the text smaller. Let's make them uppercase. So text transform uppercase. Let's make them bold. So font weight bold. Let's add a little bit of letter spacing, something like one pixel should do the trick. And finally, we'll add uh, padding, 0.75 rems, zero. Just add a little bit of spacing on the top and bottom. Great. So now, this is how the sidebar looks like. The last thing that uh, we need to style here is the light and dark mode toggle. And the style for that will look something like this. Let's start with the parent element. So I'm going to say sidebar theme switcher. And we're going to use background color. We're going to set that to theme switcher BG, like so. Then let's make it round. 50 pixels will do the trick. Let's set display to flex. And let's align items to the center, like that. Let's set a padding of, let's actually go to Figma and find that out. So these items, the icons, are basically set at 14 pixels away from the, uh, the edges here, right? So 14 pixels divided by 16 pixels will give us 0.875 rems. Now, we can see that the uh, switcher here, the background, takes up the entire available width. And that's because when we created the sidebar, we set a display to flex and flex direction column. And by default, items will stretch to fill the entire available space. So to get around that, uh, what we can do is we can say align items, flex start, right? So that will make sure the, item, the uh, items are aligned to the left side in this case. So uh, now this toggle will take up only as much space as, uh, as it needs. Now coming back to, uh, to our switcher here, uh, let's also set a gap. And I've made the calculations, it's 1.5. 75 rems, and this refers to the gap between the two icons. Uh, finally, let's add a cursor pointer. So we get a nice hand cursor when we hover over it. And we'll set a position relative. And the position relative will be used a little bit later when we add a pseudo element as this colored circle that's going to be placed under each icon. So now, let's uh, let's create that pseudo element. So sidebar theme switcher. We're going to use a before. You can use an after pseudo element just as well. Uh, we're going to set the content to none. Uh, we're going to set the position to absolute. I'm going to give it a width and a height equal 2.5 rems. Now we're going to give it a background color, and that's going to be equal to the theme switcher indicator. And let's give the same border radius of uh, 50 pixels. So it's round. And let's set a Z index of zero. And then we can target the sidebar theme switcher SVGs. And we'll give these a Z index of one, right? So the uh, icon will actually be above this pseudo element. Okay, so Z index zero. Uh, let's also set the left side to zero, like that. And now it's simply a matter of moving it in the right position. So on dark mode, this will be placed four pixels from the edge. On light mode, yeah, this will be placed four pixels from the other edge. So I've also made the calculations and I created a special a variable called theme switcher indicator pass for position. So that's on dark mode, it's equal to 
0.25 rems. On light mode, it's equal to 0.25 rems. So with that in place, we can say transform, translate. Uh, we're going to be using a translate X here. And we're going to be saying var theme switcher indicator position, like so. Perfect. Next, it's simply a matter of um, using the proper colors for these elements, for these icons, icons, I should say. And that's pretty simple. We target each icon and we set the fill to the correct value. And with that, the dark and light mode toggle is styled. Now we just need to make it work. As you saw, the sidebar is now complete, except for that light and dark toggle. Um, it's styled already, but it doesn't work. So let's go ahead and add the functionality next. Now, I won't spend too much time um, showing you how to create this functionality because I've made a separate course specifically on this topic. And you'll find uh, that course linked in the video description, or you'll see a card uh, somewhere here on the screen. So instead, what I'll do is I'll show you the final product and I'll uh, quickly uh, walk you through the steps that I took to get there. Okay, let's go. So if we open the sidebar now and we click this toggle, you'll see that uh, we can switch between light and dark mode. And I also added a little animation uh, to uh, the toggle so that we can see uh, the actual element moving from, uh, from light to dark and vice versa. And you can really improve on this by adding some more transitions to the various elements. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm just going over uh, the very important parts and I'll leave it up to you to, uh, to dress this up however uh, you see fit. So how exactly does this work? Well, it all starts here in AppJS, where I wrote a theme switcher function that's uh, executed when we click on the actual theme switcher. So what I'm doing is I'm getting the root element. In my case, that's the HTML element. And I'm also creating a variable for uh, or called data theme. And what I'm doing is I'm getting the data theme attribute from the HTML element. Now, if I don't have one, this will also work, right? Because what I'm doing next is I'm saying, look, the new theme is equal to the following. If the data theme that I got from the HTML element is light, then the new theme will be dark. So I'm switching them around. Otherwise, it's going to be light. But of course, if I don't have an attribute set, that's perfectly fine. I'm setting a new one right here. So the root element, the HTML element, I'm using set attribute uh, to set the custom attribute of data theme to the new value. And then what I'm doing is I'm using local storage uh, to create a new item for the selected theme. All right, so if we open up the dev tools and we go to, uh, sorry, storage, and we open local storage, you can see that we have a new entry here called theme, and currently it has the value of dark, but whenever I change the theme, the browser automatically save, saves my choice in local storage. So next time I reload the page, that, uh, that setting is remembered, right? So to, to set the proper theme on page load, I wrote a very small script that does the following. First, it checks for local storage. So if I have an item set in local storage, then I'm retrieving that in the local s variable. But if I don't have it set, 
then I'm looking at the operating system and I'm seeing, do I have dark mode or do I have a light mode set to my operating system? So for example, if I were to delete this, right? Currently in Windows, my color mode is set to dark, okay? So if I refresh the page, it reverts back to the dark setting. And as you can see in local storage, I don't have anything yet. But as soon as I uh, work the toggle here, oops, I meant uh, local storage. Uh, this sets the theme back to light or dark or whatever. So this is a really cool uh, system that allows you to use a color switcher and also save your preferences in local storage and also uh, check for the operating system preferences. As I said, I have a dedicated video just for this. So uh, make sure you check out the link in the video description to learn how to create this in more detail. Now, so far we've been styling our dashboard for small screens, but if you remember our design included specifications for larger screens, right? So let's go ahead and create the design or style for larger screens. Now let's uh, take a, another look at the Figma design and see exactly what's different from small screens to uh, to large screens. So uh, on large screens, we of course no longer need this menu button here in the header because the sidebar is always visible. Uh, we're displaying a logo. Uh, we're displaying the text for uh, these links here on the top. And we're also displaying the collapse button because the sidebar is now collapsible. It can go from this to this. Right, so not many changes, but uh, we still need to implement them. So uh, let's go ahead and do this. Let's uh, open up the uh, the inspector here, and let's open up the responsive mode. Right, we can trigger that change uh, in the design. It's set at seven hundred and sixty-eight pixels, so we can do that as well. It's going to be around here, 768, so around here, or we can go with uh, with a lower value. Um, it's it's really up to us, whatever feels uh, feels good for us. So let's uh, style for large screens. So I'm gonna create a media query, a media uh, screen, and let's set a min width of, let's say 600 pixels, that, that should uh, should be just fine. So on 600 pixels and up, we'll do the following. We'll say main header, sidebar toggle. We're going to hide that. And let's see. Okay, so this is where we start making our change, like so. Uh, what else? We need to display the logo, right? So we'll say main header logo. Let's set a display to block. Uh, let's change the size of the SVGs. We'll say main header SVGs because the icons are a tad smaller on uh, on large screens. We're going to set the width and height to two rems like so, or uh, sorry, I meant to say 1.25 rems and the logo is actually two rems. So logo SVG is two rems like that. Next, uh, let's uh, show the text for um, for those links. So I'm going to say main header a span. We're going to set a display to inline block like so. Uh, let's actually remove the underline. So text decoration, text deco none like so. So display inline block. Uh, let's uh, make the text smaller font size, we're going to use 81.25 uh, rems, sorry, 81.25%, I meant. Uh, let's set the proper color for these. So we're going to say var, and these will be equal to main header link color. Let's, uh, let's add a gap 
uh, between the icon and the text, 0.5 rems will uh, do the trick nicely here. And uh, that's about it for the header, right? We go from this to this. Great. Next, let's work on the sidebar. So sidebar, if you remember, on mobile, it was positioned absolutely. For now, we're going to use position relative. And we'll also remove that transformation we did. Uh, the main, which is the container for the sidebar and the main content. Let's set a display to grid. And we'll set uh, grid template columns. Auto is the first one for the sidebar and 1FR for the rest of the content, right? So now the sidebar sits nicely at the left of the main content. There is one other element we need to bring in, and that is the sidebar collapse. This one, the, uh, the button. So let's target that. We're going to say sidebar collapse. That's the ID that we used. Uh, we're going to set a display to flex. And that's a button, so we need to do a little bit of styling to it. Let's align the items to the center so text and icon are properly aligned. We're going to add a 0.75 rem gap and also a padding of 0.75 rems, just like that. And now we'll do appearance none. We'll set the background color to transparent and we'll remove the border like so. So it just looks like a regular link. Uh, let's also change the font size to 81.25%. Uh, so it's just a little bit smaller. And let's change the color to that uh, primary blue, like so. And let's change the cursor to pointer, like so. Let's, uh, let's change the, uh, the color of the SVG as well. So we're going to say sidebar collapse SVG. Now we're going to say fill primary base. And in terms of styling, that's pretty much it for large screens. So again, we're going from small screens, which look like this, and we need uh, to click this, uh, this icon to, uh, to show the sidebar, right? And we go to this large screens where the sidebar is always there. Uh, we made some changes to uh, to the top bar as well to the header, and we of course brought the collapsible menu button. And with that, our project is almost done. We just need to add that sidebar collapse functionality. Super easy to do. Let's get started. Creating the sidebar collapse functionality is actually pretty simple. It's actually very similar to what we did for this bit, right? This one toggles a class on the body element. Well, we can do the same for this one, right? So let's open up app.js and I'm simply going to copy this. I'm going to paste it in, and this is going to be for sidebar collapse, okay? Constant here is going to be sidebar collapse. Uh, the class that we're going to toggle is going to be called sidebar collapsed, and the sidebar uh, trigger, we're just going to rename it like this. Document get element by ID and the ID that we're going to use here is called sidebar collapsed, I believe. Let's uh, look back in the code. Sidebar collapse. This is the uh, the button, like so. Okay, so then sidebar collapsed trigger add event listener on click, we execute sidebar uh, collapse. And I believe it's called like so. All right. So now it should work, but it doesn't. So why isn't this working? Sidebar collapse. Okay, so that's the function. Okay, sidebar collapse 
trigger. Let's do a refresh here. Yep, still not working. Um, App.js on line 24. So let's paste that back. It says it's null. Okay. So sidebar collapse trigger document get element by ID. Sidebar collapse. Oh, sorry about that. I got the wrong ID there. Okay. So clicking this will simply toggle the class of sidebar collapsed on the body element. Okay. So based on that, in CSS, we can start adding the proper styles. So what's different from regular sidebar and collapsed sidebar? Well, first of all, we don't have any of the text on the links or the collapse button. We don't have the uh, menu headings, right? We just have the icons here. And also the dark and light mode toggle is also gone. So very simple. Uh, we're going to do this in the media query because this is only available for a larger screens. First of all, let's start hiding elements, right? So we're going to say body with a class of sidebar uh, collapsed. Let's go ahead and copy this. We'll uh, need it. Uh, let's uh, get the menu headings. And then let's get all of the spans and also the sidebar theme switcher, right? All of these will be setting display to none. So let's collapse so we can see this uh, in action. Then uh, let's work on the sidebar links. So sidebar A, and this also applies to the actual collapse button. All right, we're going to say sidebar collapse. Uh, what do we need to do here is we need to make these a fixed width and align the icons in the center. So very simple, we'll set the width to 2.75 rems. And we'll set justify content to the center. And um, also, if you remember, our sidebar has a larger padding on the right side. So we can target a sidebar and we can say padding right 1.5 rems, just like the other sides. And uh, this button needs to be reversed, right? It needs to point to the right side. So an easy way to do that without having to, uh, to replace the icon itself, we can say uh, sidebar collapse SVG. We can do a simple transform, a rotate 180 degrees, right? So when it's uh, collapsed, it points to the right. When it's expanded, it points to the left. And that's our simple collapsible sidebar. Very easy to do. Uh, we wrote just a tiny bit of JavaScript to basically toggle a class on the body element. And by using that class, we added all the necessary styling. So let's take uh, one final look at, uh, at our finished project here. So we start on small screens where we need to click this, uh, this menu button to display the sidebar. And at any point, we can change between light and dark mode. And on larger screens, the sidebar is always there. The header is changed because it can accommodate a lot more content. We're now displaying the, uh, the text on the links. We're also displaying a logo. And the sidebar is now collapsible just like so. And of course, the mode switcher, the color switcher works regardless of screen size. And that's about it for this course. Let us know if you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. As always, don't forget to check out the Envato Test Plus YouTube channel 
for more content like this, but also to learn about web design, web development, and a whole lot more. It's free, so make sure to also hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. I'm Adi, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.